Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're doing a review of the Pivus Zios Android Media Player. You also have the option to flash uh, XBMC, the native client. So you can natively boot into XBMC. However, you can't run Android at the same time. However, there is a separate XBMC Android app, which you can use if you're running this device on the Android OS instead. Uh, so basically, there is a Sense Remote, which is sold separately. Let me get this portion quickly over with. This remote is purchased separately. It works as a pointer mouse for a computer or even as this or uh, even for this device. And I have to say this this remote is absolutely horrible. Um, for a PC, it has a volume control. You have your left click, right click, home button, mouse lock. Randomly when I'm not using this remote, uh, sometimes it's it's you know not in standby mode and they see now it's on. It'll cause uh, the Windows logo and Windows 7 to pop up with your whole app listing randomly. It'll just randomly open for no uh, reason at all. Um, when using it on the Android system on this, it's absolutely horrendous. Sometimes the mouse will just freeze on the screen and you keep pointing up and up. It'll just drag horizontally and then all of a sudden sh like shoot all the way up. Uh, so this remote, even though it's sold separately, I highly recommend you do not purchase it. It's absolutely terrible. As for the Pivot Zios, media player itself. Its dimensions is 3.93 by 3.93 by 0 0.66 inches. Uh, comparing to my Nexus 4 device, you kind of get a rough idea of how tiny it is. And in terms of thickness, it's really thin for a media player. This is the smallest media player I've ever used, basically. On the front, you have some uh, LED notifications, one for power. I think that's notification. I haven't paid attention to it myself. Internet, remote, sensor. Uh, you have a micro SD card port, which supports up to 32 gigabytes maximum. Uh, two USB ports. At the back you have an Ethernet LAN which supports 10 and 100. Another USB port, HDMI output and DC in for power and a power button. On the right you have nothing. On the bottom you have a oops, upgrade pin which is used when you're flashing to XBMC operating system or if you want to flash back to Android. 802.11 BGN Wi-Fi. The uh, wireless adapter is already built inside. Please do not ask me how powerful the wireless adapter in here is because it's impossible to answer. It strictly depends on your home setup, how many walls are in between you, your device and your router, how strong your router signal is. So it's impossible for me to answer, okay? Now there's one thing you must be aware of that's not listed on the box. Um, here it says GMM3. The fact that mine says M3 means I have a 1 gigahertz processor in here. If yours says M and something else other than 3, that means your device is not a 1 gigahertz core processor and it's slower than that. But according to their official specs, uh, they say you get an ARM Cortex A9 processor, an OpenGL Mali 400 uh, GPU, RAM of 512 megabytes DDR2, and uh, storage of 2 gigabytes 9 flash. Now, the only thing that's dependent on the serial number, as mentioned, is the processor. Everything else, like the RAM and storage, is always the same on any Zios device, okay? So let's get into the OS. Okay, I'm going to be starting with the Android side of things for the OS. And the first thing we're demonstrating for you guys is Netflix, because this is a media player. Um, if you're running the M3 version of the Zios, like I am, there's a known issue. The Pivis team even knows about it, that... Picture from Netflix will not work. You'll get sound, but no picture, and you'll have to modify a system file. Uh, the Pivus team has uploaded a video on YouTube ex explaining and showing how to get that done. You can find a link to that video in the description below. However, even when you use their fix, the issue is that you'll notice that my TV is 16 by 9 ratio, but the picture on from Netflix is only 4 by 3. I've even set the Zios output, the digital output, to um, 1080p because I'm running a 1080p TV. Even then, it, st it stays in 4 by 3 ratio. And as for the picture quality itself, it's really terrible. It's, it's less than DVD quality. I would say it's more like VHS quality. So Netflix does work with tweaking, which is a problem. It shouldn't have to tweak it in the first place. And then even when you get it working, the picture quality is not great. Uh, there's another issue. I s tried sideloading Hulu Plus app. It worked. It opened, and then it says, this device is not supported. So the Hulu Plus app will not work on this device either. The Zios will not use Hulu Plus. Furthermore, uh, when I try going to the Hulu Plus webpage, uh, it says that you don't have Flash. So, you know, if you, if you have this device and you want to try sideloading Flash, by all means, go ahead. But considering that the browser experience is really laggy and slow, I don't think you'll have much luck with it. Um, the browser in, in general is pretty laggy. I have a wired connection right now, 
It's internet wired and it's still pretty slow at times. The user interface is extremely difficult to use. Uh, if you're used to using an Android tablet or phone, it should be fairly easy to use an Android device. This is an exception. This thing is really laggy. Sometimes it just won't click when you res like you know you're doing select something or selecting something. It, it just won't respond. Uh, the interface is extremely laggy and slow. Uh, to get updates, you have to go to the Pivis forums most of the time, depending on which uh, version of the Zios you're running. And even then, you have to sideload it with a micro SD card. So it's mandatory to upload or do any modification that you get in a micro SD card. So you basically have to per make an additional purchase of some sort. Another problem is you cannot use any keyboard on the device out of the box. So basically, this is the default remote that comes out of the box. You cannot select and use a keyboard on Android with this remote. The only way you can use a keyboard is through um, the Sense remote, which I showed to you guys, the keyboard, or a mouse. That's the only way you can use a keyboard on this thing. So if you if you want to you know log into Google Play and uh, use uh, Gmail or whatever, you must make an additional purchase of some sort. You can't just use the keyboard right off the box. So that's really annoying. I, I can't believe that that's the case. Another problem is Google Play Store app simply doesn't open sometimes. You see it opened and it just closed on its own. No message, nothing. I found a workaround to get it up and running, but it's not easy. And Well, it's easy, but it's just annoying. You have to go to uh, the web browser, type in Google Play, and if you try to open Google Play right away, like from this link right here, it still won't work. You gotta type Google Play and then an app name. So let's say Angry Birds. Whoops. Okay, I already pressed enter, so he's not responding to me right now. Oh man. Okay, finally. So I'll click this link here. It asks to open Google Play, and now Google Play will open. And then from here, now that I'm in the Google Play app, then I can search additional apps like I'm supposed to. So that's how I got around my Google Play opening problem. But, I mean, Google Play is the most pivotal part of Android, and it doesn't open properly. That's a big problem to me in my eyes. Okay, so right now I'm using a XBMC app. This is not the XBMC operating system. I sideloaded the app. You can get it from the Pivis forums or the XBMC website. And I have to say it, it works pretty good. This is like one of the rare good working things on this device. Um, this app supports 5.1 surround sound. It, it works fantastic. Um, I highly recommend you have a mouse to use this because without a mouse, it's really difficult to use. Even the sense remote is pretty horrible. With a mouse, it's, it's really easy. Uh, picture clarity is great. Um, there's like no video stutter at all. I, I have yet to find any video stutter. Other app, video playing apps like MX Player, BS Player, V Player, they stutter, they lag, and they don't support 5.1 surround sound output. The XBMC player does. Not only that, you can also sideload add-ons. I was able to sideload the um, YouTube add-on for XBMC, even though I'm still running it in Android. So the XBMC player app is pretty awesome. Okay, so one thing you guys might be curious about is how does this thing perform with gaming? I mean, you would love to turn your TV into a giant tablet, right? I mean, why not? Here's the thing, if, if an app like, say, where's my parry, for example, that app must, must run in portrait mode. It won't work on this device. This device can only run in landscape mode. So if you're if you're trying to run a game or any app that is mandatory you be in portrait mode, it will not work for you. Okay, you'll get like a half screen cutoff. And then I, I couldn't exit the app. I had to unplug the device and then plug it back in to get it working. Games that are simple and low graphics and detail like Angry Birds, uh, they're okay. At times, you know, like I said, the mouse doesn't respond, the, the keyboard doesn't respond, the sense remote doesn't respond. That's more of an issue with uh, the, the system itself, the Zios device itself. So games like this that are low detail, they'll run okay. Don't, don't mind my playing, I'm just demonstrating for whatever reason. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like, I'm not going to demonstrate a high graphic game like Need for Speed. So please don't make app requests. Uh, I can just say that the Android experience is horrible. There's no need to make an, an app request that which app I could run for you guys to demonstrate. I'm not going to do it because it's going to be most likely terrible. The last thing I want to mention for the Android si side of things is sometimes this device does not turn off. Um, I'll turn it off and then it'll just turn back on on its own for no apparent reason. It'll just do it on its own. Nothing's plugged in. I'm not touching a remote or anything. And here's the other thing, if you buy the Sense remote separately, there's no power button on it. 
Whereas the remote that comes out of the box, even though it does practically next to no functionality, it has a power button. But as mentioned, the device has a mind of its own. Sometimes it simply just won't turn off. Okay, so before I demonstrate the Linux uh, XBMC version, I just want to mention that this device, if you have it plugged into a power bar, every time you turn the power bar off, it's off. Every time you turn the power bar on, this device will automatically boot up. So if you plan to plug this into a power bar, it could be a big annoyance. Uh, so this is, I've, I've booted into the Linux XBMC OS. I'm just going to demonstrate it quickly because it's almost identical to the XBMC app for Android. I'll just go to a USB stick. And as you can see, it has resumed playback, <clears throat> which is pretty nice. Um, but there's not much more to demonstrate, to be honest. It's almost identical to um, the Android app. And to be honest, XBMC has too many functions and features to go through. It'll make this video way too long. So I'm just going to give you guys a final rating of this device. Um, if I have to give this device a rating, I'll give it a 2 out of a 5. And here's why. The pros of the device is that it comes with Google Play, which means you have access to hundreds of thousands of apps. Um, XBMC for the Android OS, the app, works fantastic. Not only that, but booting directly into XBMC Linux, which I have done right now, is even a better experience. The device is really responsive and quick, and while in Linux XBMC, you only need the generic remote. You don't need additional hardware. All these buttons here is what you is all you need. However, there are many cons with the device. Uh, right out of the box, the device is extremely buggy. It's unresponsive at times, as you guys have seen earlier, and it doesn't feel complete out of the box. It seems like a you know, rush job product and that's pretty much it. Uh, Android apps must support landscape mode. If they do not, you won't be able to use the app for Android. The device is not meant for people that aren't tech savvy. There's no plug and play. There's a lot of tinkering involved, so it's not an easy device to learn and use right away. The device also randomly turns back on. Sometimes I'll power it off and randomly it'll just turn back on. However, I've only noticed that problem while running Android. There is poor Netflix picture playback quality and it doesn't work out of the box and not only that Hulu Plus does not work at all with Android. Um, finding good apps that play DTS audio or 5.1 surround sound audio on Android is really difficult to find. However, the XBMC app for Android does a superb job, but it's still trouble if you plan to use a different app. Not only that, I'm having trouble downloading some add-ons for XBMC, for example, uh, Universal Movie Scraper or Scrapper. Um, it's, I, it's not working. It, the download progress has been stuck at 0% for like an hour already and I have a wired connection with the device. Not only that, if you're using the Android version or sorry, the Android OS, as mentioned before, to use any keyboard at all, even Google Play, you must use additional hardware. So you're forced to buy additional hardware like a mouse, keyboard or the sense remote. And not only that, to try install Linux XBMC, the instructions on Pivis's forums are incomplete. They don't give you the full instructions that are needed to install it. I had to actually YouTube it and Google it myself, and then I could get it up and running. So if you plan to use XBMC Linux, this device is definitely for you. But the fact that it comes as an with Android and is advertised as an Android device, it's a horrendous experience. It's not easy to use. So for XBMC users, by all means, purchase it. More power to you. But for everyone else, avoid this device. If you found this video useful, check out my website in the description below. Hit the like button. It does help. Subscribe. And thanks for watching.